Okay, so welcome back. Um, today we're going to start a series where we look at how we can build this application which basically converts your Arduino into an oscilloscope. And you can see it's very simple uh, connection on the Arduino side. I've got an Arduino Uno and I've just got a USB connection to my computer and I've got two wires coming in to feed this um, waveform from my signal generator into this analog input. So it's very simple connection to the Arduino. You don't need anything special. And it basically just samples that uh, input waveform, sends the data over the USB. And this op application just takes that data and continually updates this screen with a um, oscilloscope trace of that input waveform. And you can see I can change the waveform on my um, my function generator and it updates on the scope and you can see it's fairly fast uh, response. So let's take a look at some of the basic functionality of this and then what we'll do is we'll get into the very very important design phase to figure out how we're going to design this and what things we need to be aware of. Now we're going to be building this application in C Sharp but you can build this in just about any programming language. It's not really that complex. There's not a lot of fancy stuff going on. What's important and what we're going to talk about in future videos is the design concepts and how you need to do this, how you need to implement this to get a good um, functional oscilloscope. There are some things you need to consider like timing and you know what are the features of an oscilloscope and what are the limitations of the Arduino. And we're going to be taking a look at that in future videos. So I encourage you to watch this series. Now let's go through and take a brief look at the functionality of this application. And um, as you can see up on the, on the left, the first thing is the COM port. Basically, of course, you have to first decide what COM port you're going to use on your computer to access the Arduino. So here you select the COM port and open it. And you can see down here is a text box. When I start this application, it goes out and it searches for the active COM ports on this computer and it gives you a list. And not only does it list the COM4, COM7, COM8, it also does something that you don't see very often, which is it accesses the description of each COM port. So for example, COM4, is a generic USB serial port. Actually, I've got an Arduino Nano connected there, but apparently it doesn't have a description. COM7, I've got an Arduino Uno, and it tells you there's an Uno connected. So then you say, oh, that's where my Uno is. COM8 has an Arduino Mega connected, 2560. So really nice, it gives you the description. So you take a look here, you say, okay, I'm gonna connect COM7. So you type in COM7, which I already did, you open the port. Now it gives you the option to close the port and it tells you it successfully opened the port. And then you can enter how many samples you want per scan or per burst. So for example, in this um, scan on the scope, it's 50 milliseconds and that's going to contain 500 samples. So you can specify how many samples per scan or per burst. And then you can enter the VREF for the Arduino. And we'll talk about this a little bit, little bit later, but it's what the Arduino uses to convert between its samples that go from 0 to 1023. It basically takes this input voltage, 0 to 5 volts, uses an analog to digital converter, and converts that range of 0 to 5 or 0 to 5.1 or whatever into a range of 0 to 1023 a uh, 10 bit a 10 bit number so this arduino vref is the value that the arduino uses to relate to 1023 and here of course we've got our scope trace we're calculating maximum volts or peak volts on this waveform is 2.6 which is correct average volts is zero and then here I can adjust the vertical scale. Right now it's times one. So you can see it goes from zero to five and to minus five. Zero to 2.5, or I can set it even lower. So it's going to zero, minus 0.5 volts to plus 0.5 volts. And then I can also change the number of seconds in my scan. Right now it's 50 milliseconds max. I can bring that down to say, half a second. So now it's showing 
500 milliseconds or half a second. Now, another option I've got here is called coupling. If you're familiar with oscilloscopes, you know there's AC and DC coupling. So let's bring this back down so you can see the waveform. And right now I've got it on AC coupling, which means it basically removes any DC components. So let's put it on DC coupling where it includes the DC components. So now what I've done is I've changed to a sine wave uh, that is being generated with an offset of two volts out of my function generator, my signal generator. And you can see it is with DC, DC offset, it includes the offset coming from the function generator. So the middle is two volts. You can see it's calculating the average volts is about two volts. Okay, so and then it tells me the maximum volts is 3.73, which is this peak. Now I can remove the DC by going to AC coupling and you can see now it's around zero volts and it's going plus or minus about 1.7 and the average is zero. So a lot of nice functionality here. I can also click this debug where it starts to tell me what the total uh, elapsed times are and we'll talk about that later. But this is basically the functionality we're going to implement in our C-sharp application. Again, like I say, the programming language you use is almost irrelevant because what's really important here is the concepts, you know, the design concepts, how you do it. The actual implementation is pretty easy no matter what programming language. So even if you're working in Python or something else, I encourage you to stick around because we'll be looking into, for example, the Arduino, what's its capabilities, what's its limitations, you know, how do we have to set everything up to give us this fast response and to be able to select the scales and to open and close the port and that kind of thing. So um, what we're going to start out in this video is looking at some of the basic generic design concepts. And then in future videos, we're going to break those down into components and, and try to optimize them and figure out how to implement them individually so we can get a nice working application. Okay, so let's start taking a look at some of the basic uh, functions and a little block diagram of what we need to do to design this. What you will find in the engineering world is, and, and the reason why you never want to start out by just writing code first, you want to design first, is because there are some things that are not very intuitive that you're going to realize as you start going through the process of designing. And there are going to be some big factors that don't that don't jump out at you initially. And you have to get down and start working with it before you start to realize that it's an issue. So there are things involved with this that we're going to see as we get in more detail, such as timing and hardware capabilities that we're going to have to deal with. This is a good starting point so that we can have a better idea about what those limitations are. So here we have two big blocks. One's the Arduino and one is our computer. And the way it's going to work is the Arduino at the, uh, in our case, the analog zero input uh, can accept a signal from zero to five volts. So we're going to have our, in our case, our signal generator voltage that goes from zero to five volts coming into A0. And we want to have our application convert that into an oscilloscope trace. So it's going in A0, and what the Arduino does is it takes those values and runs it through what's called an analog to digital converter. A varying five, 0 to 5 volts becomes digital numbers. In this case, with the AT Mega 328 chip, it has a built-in analog to digital converter that converts that 0 to 5 volts, or whatever the actual range is, into values that go from 0 to 1023. And that's because it, it uses a binary number, a 10-bit binary number, that has possible values that can go from 0 to 1023. So it, it converts that 0 to 5 volts, or whatever the actual range is, into a set of numbers that go from 0 to 1023. And in this case, we're going to put those numbers for example, if we have 100 samples, we're going to put that into an array of 100 values. Now, the way this analog to digital converter works is it takes the input voltage, 0 to 5 volts, and compares it to what's called a VREF, or a voltage reference value. And in our case, since we're using the via USB voltage, it's going to take that USB voltage, and if you know anything about USB voltage, you know they can vary all over the place. 
And I not long ago did a video talking about the Arduino and getting accurate uh, readings on the analog read and how to understand the VREF and the USB voltage and that kind of thing. So I encourage you to take a look at those. So uh, it takes that VREF that it generates from the USB and it, and it rarely is going to be 5 volts. It might be 5.1 or less than 5, but it's going to compare the input 0 to 5 volts with that range. And for example, if it chooses the VREF as 5.1, then if the analog input goes to 5.1, it will send out a value of 1023. So it just converts the 0 to 5 volt range into a value from 0 to 1023. And again, it's going to be a big array of numbers. And then it sends that over the USB COM port into the computer. Now, it only does that in our case, when it's requested by the computer. So we're going to send a request, and in our case, it's going to be a simple string of B100 that says, send me a burst of data, and I want 100 samples. So we're going to send that string. The Arduino is going to read the string, and it's going to do 100 samples that are that get values from 0 to 1023 from the analog to digital converter. So this is going to go in pretty much a loop where it gets a request, generates the array of numbers and sends it. It gets another request, generates an array of samples. It does a burst of samples and then sends it. Now on the computer side, uh, we've got these blocks and it's nice to, to develop these block diagrams, especially if you're going to write code because you can start to see how each one of these can be like an object. In object-oriented programming, you have a nice clean object that has one function, and you can start to see how you can take these block diagrams and write your code to match these blocks. So the first thing it wants to do is open a COM port. So you're going to need some functionality to do that. And then we want some functionality to send a request to give me the burst of data. Then it's going to have to read that data that it receives from the COM port, and then it's going to have to process the data. Now again, we're getting values from 0 to 1023 that mean absolutely nothing to us. We have to convert those back to voltages like we were receiving at the uh, analog zero pin. So we're going to have to figure out how to process a number from 0 to 1023 and convert that back to the 0 to 5 volts, which means we're going to have to know what this V reference is. So once we've done all the processing, then we have to go through and do a plot. And once the plot's all done, we're going to have to go through that process all over again so we can refresh every scan. We'll send out another request, get the data, and do a plot. Refresh the oscilloscope trace, send another request, get the data, read it, process, and plot. So that's the basic functionality. And when you start to think about this, you're going to see that there are some other non-intuitive things we're going to have to address, such as timing. So for example, we don't want to send a request constantly before this Arduino has time to gather the data and send it, and we've processed it. We want to wait until this process has been completed and plotted before we ask for another burst of data. Otherwise, we may be doing things when the other guy's not done and we're going to get a big mess. Now, there are ways around that, but what we're going to do is we're doing a simple process where we wait for all this thing to be done, then send another request. So we're going to have to know about timing. We're going to have to understand when do we send the request? Do we send it after every 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds? Or when can we send the request? When is this process done such that we can send another request? We're also going to have to think about limitations of the Arduino. How fast can it operate? And we're going to have these array of values how much data can this Arduino store? So those are the things that we're going to have to look into and that aren't really intuitive until you start to get into this. So we're going to use this as the basic starting point to figure out what functionality we're going to need. Okay, so now that we have a basic block diagram of the functionality of this system, let's start thinking about some of the challenges we might want to address first. Now, if you have dealt with serial ports from back in the 80s and 90s, as I have, when we had what were called modems, we had like 28K and 56K modems, you might recall how slow they were. 
And if you do Arduino programming, you know that the COM port is often set to like 9600 baud. And the first thing that might jump out at you is we've got here an oscilloscope that is getting 500 samples and it's updating in a fraction of a second. How is that going to work with a 9600 baud modem? To many, that might be the number one thing that you want to look at because that doesn't make sense right off. What we're going to do in the next video is we're going to look in depth at the USB connection and how we can set up the serial baud rate and whether it can even be done. How do you get it to respond this fast? So um, I encourage you to stick around for the next set of videos in this series. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification. And most of all, let others know that we're here so we get some more viewers. Thanks again. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.